actually a company hub. <laughs> when uh, when uh, Mochizuki-san first Sorry. came to Howard Morkenkan, and uh, two of the suit actors came with him, uh, Mr. Maeda, who was Tyranna Ranger or Red Ranger, and Mr. Takeuchi, who was Sorry. Dragon Ranger or Green Ranger. They were shocked at everybody's cosplay and the helmets because they said we don't have we don't even have anything like this in Japan. <laughs> so Mr. Maeda took a helmet and he told the fan, "Thank you." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then he gave it back. Five minutes left. Yeah. Power Rangers Dino Charge. Yeah. 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 What was that? They Say again. No, they're not. They're, they're not, not doing uh, any current in that series. It's different actors. Yeah. It's always different. <laughs> every year, every Power Rangers series is a different group, and every year in Japan it changes. Where sometimes in the USA or uh, the USA version, they sometimes try to continue the story and the characters, but in Japan it's different. Every year is a different series, different story, different concept. <laughs> for probably 20-something years. You've got all these questions that are brewing up inside you, and we have all the answers. If we don't have the answers, we'll make them up yes. <laughs> on the spot. Uh, but So what we do is we kind of just open the floor to you guys, and you know, if you've got a question, throw your hand up, I guess, or you guys don't have a microphone for that. We're right? one. Oh, look what's Oh, they're getting the mic for you. Magic. Perfect. It may be hard to get in and out of seats, though. <clears throat> Well, they can figure it out. It, it, this is very steep. Check, check. What we're going to do is we're going to put a microphone right here, guys. If you want to ask a question, check. you can line up and do the stairs. That's how we're doing it all weekend. So we make sure everybody gets a chance to ask a question. So smart. Yeah, we try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do ask that you keep it to one question each, just so we make sure everybody has time, and then we can uh, come back around if you guys have initial questions. I just want to see how the fangirl uh, thing is going here. So I'm just going to pick out somebody, maybe, I don't know, Wally? Yeah, how are you doing there? Are you squealy? Are you squealy today? Good. Are you fangirling right now? Not a girl. Yeah, you got a shout out. 
So nobody's got any questions. No, no questions. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One gentleman over here. Here we go. Come on, guys. Don't be bashful. No, sir. You get here. There we go. Fortune favors the bold people. Don't sit there forever. Look. So is everyone having a good time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's almost over. We only have a couple more hours left. Oh. 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 Oh.
Yeah, it's hard. It. For me, I think it would be um, like the first few episodes that I did, believe it or not. Because I was, I was the third Sailor Moon. And suddenly I had this insane task of taking on already a huge, iconic character. And I was going, hey, this is going to be great. And then right away I went, oh, God, what have I done? <laughs> oh, my God. I grew up watching the Flintstones. Barney Rubble had two different voices. There was Barney. And then there was the irritating Barney. And I was like, oh, God, it's the irritating Barney. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be the irritating Sarah Moon. Oh, no. What am I doing? What am I doing? And originally, they really they wanted me. They kept saying, younger, younger, higher, higher. So it just kept going, oh, 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 oh. Like, everything she was doing was like, oh, 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 oh. And I was like, I sound like a poodle that's being <laughs> I was just like, I hate this, I hate this character, I hate the way this character's going. It was really, really frustrating to me. So it took me a few episodes to really get in there and go, whoa, 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 this is not how this character's going to sound anymore. And that's when I started making it my own. But it took me a little bit, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but I had to beat them down a little bit, too. Um, I think that one of the, uh, in terms of least favorite, I think has to be when we first started, because we were very unaccustomed to working with this thing called the Rhythmo Band, which is how we ended up dubbing it, because it was it's not the normal um, dubbing situation, uh, certainly that the way it is, exists now. As Linda was saying, it's very much like karaoke, and the words are going across, you, you see the action on the screen, and then underneath the action, you've got all the different characters, and their lines are going across the screen, and you're looking for your character, and you forget, what was my character again? Am I, oh yeah, that's me. And you see it moving, and you, knew, you know that as these words are going across the screen, as soon as it hits the slash on the far left corner, that it's time for you to speak. And all these names and these words, and you see that you have to say something like, oh, hi, how are you doing? And it's all like truncated because you're trying to get each word to hit the slash. And so people often talk about, um, you know, your performance or how you prepared for this character. Uh, how I prepared for this character was I prayed that I could get the words in uh, on time. That's how I prepared. I mean, there's no, there was no time because it, there it is. You read it and, and hope for the best. So at the beginning, I remember thinking, I don't know if I can do this. This is really hard. And it was fast, too. Fast, really fast, 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 fast. It's going. And then sometimes there would be a screen. And you could it would say, uh, Leah, scre in brackets, screen. And so I know that I have to start screaming when the, when the line hits the slash. And then it would be, ah, 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 And it would go on for like five minutes. And I would have no air left. And I'd say, what, what am I screaming about? Oh, it's a happy scream? Oh, dear. So I'd have to do it again because I wouldn't know what kind of scream it was. So it, it was hard at the beginning and, and it got easier. And the words were also handwritten. Oh. Yes. Really? Yeah. So you got to read some nice chicken scratch handwriting. <laughs> what is that? You spelled that wrong. That was one. I guess that's it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah, me, sorry. <laughs> oh, is he here? I'm awake. Uh, no, uh, I, well, actually, the, the hardest thing for me uh, with Sailor Moon at all was actually uh, after the second season, uh, we were ready to go back for the third season, and I was asked to be uh, a part of Police Academy of the Series uh, filmed in Vancouver for Warner Brothers, and it was in uh, two different cities, and they couldn't make my schedule work because dubbing, it's not something, and sometimes you can do voice work over the phone, like they can do a phone patch, or you can do it anywhere in the world, but unfortunately because it was dubbing, I wasn't able to continue, and it really sucked because I loved Tuxedo Mask so much, and it was already like a thing, and so... This Warner Brothers show was asking me to be, uh, you know, out there for 11 months shooting for Police Academy, and I couldn't make both work, so it was a really tough decision. Ultimately, I chose the wrong one. Uh, I, I, I went to do text, uh, to Police Academy. It was a lot of fun. I will never take that away from myself, but uh, I wish I could have continued throughout the entire series because it was hard to leave. Uh, that, it, you know, Tuxedo Mask and let somebody else uh, do it. Although Vince Cross is a great guy. He's a friend of ours, um, but uh, I, I didn't want to leave him. He's tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> He's not tall. Just like you, Toby. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, Katie. $5. Oh, I thought you were talking about this. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Um, what's it like to work in an anime studio? Um, it's a good question. That's a great question. 
Um, well, you see, for a lot, in the olden days, uh, before shows like Sailor Moon came along, we did a lot of, it's called original animation in Toronto, which is where we're all from. We're all Canadian, did you know that? Uh, how do you have to put a steak on the Barbie? Oh, get out. <laughs> eh? You all look really good, eh? We're going to catch the plane home, eh? And it's going to be great. So, uh, when we do original animation, uh, there is no screen to look at because the animators are actually animating to your voice and to your performance. So it's a very, very different kettle of fish. So the first thing that happens is your voice is recorded and then they draw the picture. And they draw the picture. Really, so if your voice has a little squeak in it, when they're drawing the character, they can make a little, maybe your eyebrow go up or something when you go, hi, they can make the eyebrow go. I mean, it's very, very personalized. And you get a really big uh, involvement with the character. But when you're doing, as you say, an anime studio, all of the anime, well, nowadays, what is it, 90% is coming in from Japan? Is there any, there's not very much original anime being done here? Is anime is from Japan. No, 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 but I mean, there's some being produced You're talking here. dubbing. No, original anime uh, cartooning done here. Like Avatar. Yeah, I mean, but that's, that's Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to be a little slower today. I'll explain to her. I still can't fight, 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 fight. fight, 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 fight. fight, fight, fight. <laughs> So it's, it's, it, this is all by way of saying, oh, I'm just boring myself. This is just by way of saying it is very, very different. And as, as I brought up before, um, as a skill set, dubbing is so underrated. It's very, very difficult to do well. It really is. And I remember, too, being in the studio when I was doing it, they had a bar that they put across. A bar, almost like a dance bar in a way, although it was not strong enough to dance on, because I knocked it over many times. <laughs> and it was so that you wouldn't get too close to the microphone. Normally when you're doing it, you know, you're going to be about this close to the microphone. But for Sailor Moon, the microphone was a lot further away, because we were doing so much screaming. And the characters were just constantly like, Wah! going crazy. So they had this bar, and you weren't allowed to, to pass it. And I remember always holding onto the bar, just like, <laughs> And then, you know, I'd sort of get closer and closer to the microphone, closer and closer, and they're like, no, 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 Hello, my name is Cassandra. Um, do, you have, do you ever receive much criticism for the like the original TV dub? Like, there's a lot about you know the name changes, the censorship, the voices. Sometimes they play about the voices too, or they don't match up, or they, you know they sound too old, or what have you. Do you receive much of that, or what do you think of it? No, I never. We had any never received that whatsoever. because we had no control over it. So I mean, obviously people are going to have their favorite characters, and sometimes people don't. Well, <laughs> so, I don't know it. why. I can take it. You know, I, 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 I have criticism like for like the original dub just saying because of the, the year and how kind of raw it was, but obviously it did something right because we all wouldn't be sitting here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, we're very lucky. It's so and the other thing was, back in the day, there wasn't the internet. <laughs> there literally wasn't. Nope. So, like nowadays, if you did it right now, with me taking over, oh my god, thank god there was no internet back then. I would have been destroyed. However, there wasn't an internet back then, and then people could get used to me, and then they were nice. Exactly. They just had these times in their coconut bicycles. <laughs> 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 I imagine Thank that's you, what Gilligan. I was doing. I can't remember. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah, so My I meat helmet. <laughs> we don't even know if we can answer questions Thank anymore. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Charles and well, I loved Ray. She was my favorite. So. Thank you. Um, Me too. So clearly, you're not right in the head then. <laughs> <laughs> but continue, please. Um, <laughs> no, but um, well, since you didn't know much about Sailor Moon before going in, did uh, doing it and learning, I mean, seeing how people reacted to it, did it make you want to like learn more, read the manga, see the old show, or maybe even watch the new Viz dub or the uh, or um, Crystal? Well, we can't see it in Canada. We don't have, um, yeah, so we have no... Oh, that's unfortunate. I know, it's crazy, but... <laughs> yeah, we, I guess we can go on. They actually block the right now it's baseball season, so all bets are off for me. Game of Thrones, but baseball But they do block season. it, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
So, yeah, it's uh, kind of like North Korea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, oh, we have lots of Dennis Rodman. It's strange. <laughs> no, but, um, but after doing it, I, I feel like we all settled into our characters, because at first it was just Fast and Furious. We had no idea what was happening. But yeah, I think because there was such an extensive backstory for everything, I think we all sort of really embraced our characters, and were very similar to our characters. And yeah, I, I don't know how that happened, but it, it really did. It, it did. Mm -hmm. Susan, yeah. you're, it, it, yeah, it's astonishing. There's a, a photograph of, of Katie and me at the... Very often we worked by ourselves, but this particular day she and I were working together and uh, right in the middle of the... or towards the beginning of the series and Katie at that point had this very, very long, long hair that went down to her waist, dark hair, <laughs> and I had brown hair that went up into a ponytail and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, Oh my God! Did I do that on purpose? No. I just put my hair in a ponytail, and the only difference is, is that I'm just you know a tiny, 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 tiny bit shorter than um, Sailor Jupiter, five foot three and three quarters. But you know what I'm saying? I, I think tall. I have a tall brain, so it was okay. But I looked at this, the, the shots, the shot of us, and I said, I know what she did. The producer. She cast people who automatically fit. The, at least the physical requirements of each character and hoped that everything else that went along with the physical requirements, so the, the feistiness of Jupiter, the sassiness of Mars, all of that would already be there because there was no time to sort of like work on making it happen, that it would just be there. And I think it was brilliant. When I look at the casting, forget me, but I look at the casting of everyone and I think, this was actually really, really well done. I think that the people who played each and every scout did it. Said she, sorry, I'm not allowed to use the old-fashioned words, am I? <laughs> that, uh, that, that they absolutely were perfect in, in, in their casting. The only ones that never looked like their character were Sailor Moon. None of the Sailor Moons looked like Sailor Moon. That's true, except my rock and hot body. <laughs> Well, and actually, Tuxedo Mask had a nice uh, Kawasaki Ninja, and I was writing one when I auditioned for it. So it was kind of cool. I was like, hey, we have the same bike. That's pretty cool. And I was training martial arts, so it's like, and they couldn't yeah. have known that. They, there's no way they could have known that. And I like roses and long locks in the beach. <laughs> and really fun and fancy hats. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, ballistically tipped rubbery. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Of course. We didn't answer that question at all, but <laughs> maybe we did. Hey, nice is. Um, again, I'm CJ, and I have more of a request than a question. I was wondering if um, you could do in your voices your transformation oh, sequences. Oh! Yeah. I, don't, Here we go. I don't know um, what to do a mask. <laughs> oh, don't worry, he knows. He knows. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, to be honest with you. It's going to be pretty scratchy. Right. So, um, I guess uh, Linda will go first, and then oh, Katie, then Susan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great. The new Sailor Moon director, everyone. <laughs> we have a director in the house, and she's female. I love it. <laughs> okay. Ready? Moon Cosmic! <laughs> Jupiter, thunder, crash! <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> hey, are you okay? No. Um, Mars fire ignite! <laughs> and if I had a rose, I'd do this. <laughs> well, well, I'll say something. <clears throat> Hey, meatballhead, what are you doing here? I thought for sure you'd be over there with your friends, especially since you're acting like total fools. Oh, <laughs> 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 Mary, I'm sure you know that already. I've been bugging you enough this weekend. Um, I was just curious that, like, I came with all of my scouts yesterday. So how does that make you feel knowing that, in reality, you really are... Like girls' heroes, we all grew up loving you and looking up to you, and you changed a lot of people's lives. I told Linda and Susan my story, so I'm just curious how that makes you feel. If you knew how many times in a convention we ball our eyes out, you have no idea. Like seriously, we have so many fans that come over to us crying, and then we're like, Katie, yeah, it's like, don't, don't even do it. You're gonna make me start. <laughs> 
And then she starts, and then I start, and then we feel like idiots. And then we don't. We love it. We don't care. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's very, very humbling. And we really, we literally went in and did a voiceover, you know, 20 years ago. And we had no idea the impact that it was going to have. None. None. And we didn't understand the impact it had until only a few years ago when we started going to conventions. And the conventions to us, the reason we go there is because it's like a gift to us. Like, we sit there going, we had no idea. And all these people are reaching out going, and we're going, oh my God, this is like amazing. Because it'll never happen. None of the other shows we work on, it doesn't even matter. It'll never be Sailor Moon, ever. Like, the fans, we've been all over the world. We've been to Australia. We've been to Malta. We've been everywhere. And the reaction is always the same. They really are. You Sailor Moon fans are the best fans in the entire Absolutely. But also, don't forget, there, there are also guys heroes, too. We've got a lot of guys. But, sorry, at least what I will say. Is, what did you say? Are you still here? <laughs> I have a flight to catch with her. I can't deny that, because there are plenty of guys that wish they could be you. <laughs> we, we have a lot. We have a lot of guys coming over. Saying Boyfriend thank you. standards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Check the ego at the door. <laughs> I think for me, one of the re uh, just as Linda said, what we do, you know, when you're an actor and you get to work, every single moment is a blessing, and you love it. I know that every single one of us put our best foot forward when we, we were recording Sailor Moon. We tried our best because that's what we do because we're actors. And it's a really good cast and then it did well. But we did not understand for one second, and I don't even think the rest of the cast who hasn't come out, who haven't come out on these uh, tours with us understand the impact that it's had. And I was just thinking, you know, today I had a couple of very sad interactions and I thought, and they were like three in a row, and I thought, oh gosh, I don't know, Ugh, I'm going to get so emotional, I don't know if I can uh, absorb this anymore. It, because um, it, it humbles me to think that because I tried my best to do my job, and also to be as artistic as I could, that all these many years later, someone actually says, it was your voice that kept me going. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm how that feels, it, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. So, I feel so blessed to be able to come and see all of you, it, because I'm getting to see the inside workings of a culture, and it's called North America. And uh, I'm really, really honored that I'm able to do that. That so includes thank you. Canada. <laughs> yeah, it includes Canada. This is one of our criers yeah. today. Oh. Um, do you have any advice for anyone, like, budding voice actors out here who are inspired by you? Well, for us? flat out, if you think, if you're wondering if voice acting is the best job in the world, you are right. <laughs> Hands down, best job in the world. When you're working. <laughs> when you're not working, it's the worst job in the world. Because you sit there going, <laughs> phone ring. And it makes you crazy. And you have to be very, very ready to hear the word no a lot. We work a lot. We've, we've had a, a great careers. And we hear the word no all the time. Oh, Every yes. week. Every week. Yeah. All the time. And, you know, the other reality is when you're, when you, if, you know, for people that want to get into it, this is who you'll be auditioning against. Mm -hmm. Like, literally. You're, you're going into a room. I, I remember. I remember. No. I remember when I was a child, <laughs> back in theater school, I, I was in theater school and the, they brought in a special guest uh, person to talk to us about voice acting. And as soon as I heard this voice, I went, oh my god, I know that voice, I know that voice, and this and this and this, oh my god, I know this voice so well, oh my god, oh my god. And every word she said, I was just like... Writing everything down because I was just in awe, in awe, just going, oh. And the voice was Susan Roman, the person who was there. So I was just like, oh. And then when I graduated, I went to an audition, and who was sitting in the room but Susan Roman? And I'm like, oh, oh my God, Susan Roman. It was terrifying. It was terrifying. And that's when I really realized, oh, yeah, that's what it is to do this. Like, you're going up against the best. 
Really? Because mm -hmm. they want the best. But you got that job, didn't you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, but just, just to add to the advice, but if you, after knowing that you are going to accept a lot of no's, still want to do this, it is, it is the best job in the world, you need a demo. So what I suggest is to go on voicebank.net and you can hear everybody's demo. And then that's all you need to. Mm -hmm. And then you have to shop that demo around to uh, wherever you live, New York, and you know, get yourself an agent. Say what, yes. What's that called again? Voice. Voice bank. Like voice bank. Going to a, okay. Yeah. Voice bank. Dot net. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah. The other thing that you have to do is practice reading out loud all the time. So if you're gonna if you sit down and read the paper in the morning or you're reading a magazine, anything that is requires you to read in your brain, read it out loud. So that you get very, very accustomed to reading the printed word, and also that you get accustomed to the sound of your own voice. And you can even do it on your on your iPhone or, or your cell phone or whatever. Just record yourself in little snippets. Even sometimes, you know, in magazines, they'll have little bits of advertising copy, or sometimes they'll have a little character, a little animated character in a magazine. Just copy out the dialogue, read it out, read it into your phone, and listen back. And say to yourself, hmm, does that sound um, like a good read, like an authentic little character? How can I improve that? Um, am I comfortable listening to my voice? Is my voice all strangled up because I'm not breathing properly? You know what I'm saying? You're sometimes your, your own best critic if you get a chance to listen back. And of course, if you have recording equipment anywhere, uh, you know, make sure you just get behind that microphone and, and just keep talking, talk, talk, talk. When I did my first demo, a guy with, uh, many, many years ago, you know, pre-Noah's Ark, the, uh, the, uh, the guy said, I'm building a new studio, could you just come in and talk so that I can get all my sound going? So I stood in the studio for six or seven hours just talking and reading copy. And after seven hours, I thought, I'm, I'm getting kind of comfortable with this. So just keep doing the physical stuff so that when you do go in to make your demo, you're going to be very confident in the sound and the quality of what you're about to do. Make sense? Yeah, you're great. Okay. Um, reading, definitely. That was my, uh, I really need to work on my reading. In fact, that what you just said, reading aloud. Because I got the paper delivered to my house and read it aloud for as like long as I could, uh, to the point where I felt comfortable. Because uh, I was really nervous reading in front of people. I could act no problem because I have time with the script, and you can kind of memorize. I have more like a photographic memory for rem remembering lines. I remember what the paragraph looks like if there's like one line and three lines and then seven. And that's kind of the way I, I know my. I know if I know my lines if I can remember those chunks. So it's different for voice acting, though, because they hand you copy and you have to read it right there. So if you are at all nervous about reading in front of people, it's something you're going to have to get over, like, right away. Like, you cannot be shy. Okay. Yeah. No shyness. You're not <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're a doll. And like we said earlier, you guys, the reason that we do these things is for you guys. Like, just so we can meet all you guys, because... You've known us for, we've all, we both known each other for a very, very, very long time. We just never got to meet each other. You, you, we might have been there for you back in the day, but you guys were there for us, 100%, as we were starting our careers and stuff. And we love you for it. We love it. So, by all means, come by and see us. We're signing autographs and stuff like this. Just come over and say hi. We'd love to meet everybody. And give hugs. You're here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much.